What is up everybody? So summer is finally here. It is a nice 80 degrees right now. This past weekend it was 90, about 90 degrees. So it's really nice, it finally came. You know, a couple weeks ago it was like in the 50s and even in the, in the at night it got down to the 40s. And now all of a sudden it's 90. So there was like virtually no spring here in central Pennsylvania just went right to summer which you know what I'm okay with because I like warm weather I'm used to the heat you know I work in a steel mill so it's really hot in there all the time so this doesn't really bother me as much but uh, yeah it's awesome so many of you guys already know that I do have an automatic ZL1 and a lot of you guys are like oh this guy driving an automatic Camaro that's just stupid you know oh god you're you're not a man unless you drive a manual right well okay so I'm gonna tell you guys a few reasons why I chose an automatic instead of a manual on this car. Now, reason number one, and you might laugh at this, you might think it's funny, and you might think not, I'm not a real car guy, but reason number one is I don't even really drive manual. I've never even owned a manual car, okay? The only manual vehicle I've ever drove was my dad's six-speed Jeep Wrangler that he used to have. Okay, that's what I sort of learned on. And that would have been when I was like, I don't know, I think I was like 18 or 19, right? So he bought that, I drove it a few times, I didn't drive it a lot, and he sold it. He doesn't have it anymore. So that was like my my one little dip into the manual world, right? A lot of you guys have already just been driving manual since you got your first car, which is fine, you know? A lot of people learn that way. I didn't learn that way. I, I got an automatic car for my first car, and my second car was is the, my daily driver now, which is that Saturn sedan, which is um, automatic, right? So I wasn't going to buy a ZL1 that was manual and like fuck the transmission up or burn the clutch out because I'm trying to learn on a 580 horsepower car, right? And it's like, oh, why didn't you buy a, you know, a cheap, cheapo Civic or a cheapo whatever car or manual? I, I could have done that. Uh, I could have learned it. But the more I was reading about the transmission itself, you know, online, on the forums, uh, review videos. Um, you know, you got your diehard manual guys, Mike, Street Speed 717, he, he is loves his manuals, and hey, that's great, you know? I, I appreciate that too. And you got guys that are sick of driving manual, that have driven manual their entire life and can't stand it anymore because it's annoying to sit there in traffic and, and try and work the clutch like all the time. And you're, you know, clutching gas, clutching gas, you're barely going 10 miles an hour, you know? And I get that, I mean, Personally, I don't have, I've never had that experience, but um, I understand where those guys are coming from too. So, you know, you got, bo you got both worlds. You either have guys that are like, oh God, manual over nothing. You're, or you got guys that understand it, like, oh, it's an automatic. Oh, okay, cool, you know? Well, the other reason, like I said, I got this automatic was because the automatic in this car performs way different than the automatics that you guys are, you know, set, talk about, like, oh, that's, the automatics are terrible, you can't do their shitty, this automatic is very versatile, it's fun, it's actually fun to drive, you know, you have more control over the car in this automatic than certain automatics, you know, obviously you have the most control using a manual transmission, but I'll tell you what, this is pretty close, you know, I have a regular drive mode, which is I'm in right now, and it's just regular. You know, it's it's very it's the it's the most fuel economic drive mode you can be in. If I switch it to manual, I can do it right now. Like right now, I'm in I'm in M, which is sport mode. Okay. Now, when I come to a stop, the car is going to start in first gear, right? In regular drive mode, it would start in second gear to obviously conserve fuel. But in the sport mode, I have it in now. And the car still does all the shifting. I don't control any of it. It'll start in first gear. And it'll actually shift pretty much at the red line. It, it draws the RPMs out the most it can to like the optimal shift point, right? It's designed for aggressive driving, right? Now, what it also does, and not a lot of people know about it, it's kind of cool, is it will hold the gear. So it senses if you're getting on it, and here I'll show you show you guys here. I'll show you guys right now. You'll be able to hear it. So see, it's holding the gear. It's holding the gear. It's holding the gear. I'm not doing anything. It's holding the gear. 
it thinks I'm going to do something else, so it's holding that gear. It's holding that, still holding that gear, still revving down. A normal transmission would have shifted already. Still holding that gear. And it's still holding that gear. And now it finally shifted because it senses I'm slowing down. And that is awesome because, you know, I could have let off that gas because, oh, I need to let off my gas and then and then do something else. And it's holding that gear. A normal transmission would have shifted as soon as you let off that gas, right? Because it's not going to hold a gear for you. So that's the cool thing about the uh, the sport version, or the, yeah, I should say the manual mode, sport mode uh, setting. And I'm still not changing gears. Now you guys know I have paddle shifters, right? And oh, bit shifters. Some of you guys call them bit shifters. That's fine. Well, why don't you go say that to the guys with the McLarens and you know the Lambos and the Ferraris and and uh, whoever else with you know five hundred thousand dollar cars. <laughs> So, um, sorry, I had to beep at um, some Penn State something or other, I don't even know. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, why don't you guys go tell, say that to these exotic guys that have, that only have an option to have paddle shifts, cars. That's the only option they have. You can't even get manuals in some of these exotics anymore. But um, if I would use the paddle shifters, I can use them in regular manual mode, or I'm sorry, drag, drive mode or, or the uh, sport mode, right? Like right now I'm in drive mode, okay? And I'm in sixth gear. I could downshift to fourth gear right now and I'll do it. There's fourth gear, right? And I'm gonna ride it out. I'm just gonna ride this gear and it's it's it'll actually go back to drive mode because it senses I'm not gonna use it anymore, watch. I'm not doing anything, I'm not shifting the car, the car is hanging there at fourth gear. When it senses I'm not doing anything with the paddle shifters or doing any sort of aggressive driving, it will actually go back into drive. You, I think it usually happens when I slow down. It should probably do it now because I'm coming to a stoplight. But uh, it's hard to see. Yeah. Okay. So now it's back into D. It's back into drive. Right now, I'm not using the paddle shifters anymore. Okay. Now, if I would have that into sport mode, is which I just put it into sport mode right now. If I would go into the paddles, start clicking the paddles, it would stay. It would stay there. It lets you use the paddles as much as you want. It'll hold gears. It'll bounce off the rev limiter. If you don't shift, it will downshift for you though. If you're going, if you slam on your brakes and you don't have enough time to downshift or you forget whatever, it'll downshift for you, but it will not, um, it will not shift you into a higher gear. So yeah, you will bounce, you can bounce it off the rev limiter and, and screw up the engine. But um, as far as the paddle shifters, you know, it's not a dual clutch transmission. It's not anything like that. So yeah, it's not gonna react immediately when you touch the paddle, when you click the paddle, it's not gonna work, right? But it's not that slow either. Some of the paddle shifters in these cars and, and is, or tap shift or whatever you wanna call it, some of them, they, are slow like my my saturn aura had my daily driver has paddle shifters but that is slow you know yeah you just don't control gears but like that's slow you know this is actually this will actually pre-stage a gear so how it works is um when you are driving aggressively and i use that term because i don't want to say racing or, you know whatever but if you're driving or if you're on a track you know whatever um and you are wide open throttle right through first gear into second gear, it's gonna pre-stage the next gear because it thinks you're going to shift to that next gear, right? There's some algorithm built into this transmission of this car that that it's kind of like a computer, like it thinks what you're gonna do next, right? So it's actually will shift quicker, a quicker reaction time, I should say. The shift itself from second to third gear, the car shifting is not, um, does not, is not like, different it's all the same right it's the amount of reaction time it takes from when you touch the paddle to when the car actually shifts that is not as quick as let's say a dual clutch right so yeah the paddle shifters are awesome to use they're very versatile um, there's they're fun to use it's almost the same as you know having a manual transmission yes there's no clutch and yeah you don't have the speed of the control that you might have with a, a manual transmission but it's still 
it's still fun to use. You know, this transmission isn't some crappy 80s transmission that just, you know, a four speed that just shifts so slow, you know. These new autos and these cars are so fast nowadays that I don't care how many years you've been driving manual, I don't care what manual transmission you have in your car, whenever there's a clutch involved, there's no way you are going to shift faster than these automatics, especially like the new Hellcat, the, the Hellcat automatic, the, the Corvette automatic, the new ZL1 10 speed, that thing has shifts faster than a Porsche PDK. They've said it multiple times that it shifts faster, which is nuts. That is nuts. So there's no way a manual transmission, somebody pounding through gears is gonna ship. You know, you saw the videos of me and Street Speed and his Hellcat with a little drag race in Mexico, and we're talking, he's got a 707 horsepower, well had, I should say, had a 707 horsepower Hellcat. I had 650, 670 horsepower ZL1, right? And he's there, and every time he shifts, every time he shifts, he goes back. And Mike is not, you know, you guys made fun of Mike because he, uh, driver mod he sucks doesn't know how to use doesn't know how to shift no he's good he knows what he's doing you know he's had multiple manual cars he gets it so um yeah and it just that proves exactly how good these transmissions are so other than the two reasons i just told you why i chose an automatic over a manual um you know i would like to learn honestly like full fully learn how to drive a manual yeah, i'm still on the fence whether or not i want to get the 10 speed auto in the new ZL1 or the six speed manual because you know whenever a company comes out with something brand new there's always some something that they they miss or there's some kinks that they need to work out and even like with this ZL1 this generation ZL1 the 2012 right before mine they had issues that that mine mine doesn't have those issues and the 2014 and 15s don't have as many issues as mine have. So, you know, they pro it progressively gets better and they progressively work out kinks and work out, you know, recalls and stuff like that that the cars have. So, I just think with this new 10 speed auto coming out, even though that you, ha even though you have, you know, Chevy and Ford working together on this, which is awesome, when two car companies like that come together to make something, uh, it's obviously going to be ridiculously cool. But even then, there's still probably stuff that's going to go wrong with it or, you know, things that are going to pop up here and there, things are going to start breaking or whatever, I don't know, whatever could happen. So that's why I'm kind of a little worried about it. But, um, at the same aspect, at the same aspect, you know, I, I, I really do want it, you know, I want that 10 speed all that's kind of a cool thing, but, um, either way, uh, eventually I'm going to learn completely how to drive manual. Um, you guys can make fun of me all you want on YouTube. I really don't care. Hell, I laugh at it. So, but um, you can tell you I'm not a real car guy and I'm not a real driver and whatever else, but um, I don't care. It's fine with me. You can laugh, laugh out about it all you want. Um, but, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much why I chose an automatic over a manual and um, why I'll probably choose an automatic over a manual for my next ZL1. Um, and if you guys, if you guys have any other questions about me or the car or even the transmission, I know some of you guys now that have subscribed to me have ZL1s and you're now watching the video, watch, watching the channel and stuff like that. Uh, send me a message. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to talk to me about stuff because I'll answer all your questions. Um, I've done a lot of research on this car before I got it and I've learned even more since I've got it. So, um, I know a lot about it and I know bad things i know good things i know how to get around certain things you know i know the tricks of the trade i guess you could say of the car so uh feel free to message me comment like and always if you're stopping by for the first time please subscribe have a good day